Would you like to learn about how to architect your cloud architect career? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Michael Gibbs, and I'm the founder and CEO of Go Cloud Careers. And we're an organization that's dedicated towards building the most high performance cloud computing careers. Personally, I've been working in technology for over 25 years now, and I've been helping others get their first tech job or get promoted in tech for more than two decades. And I wanna help you get your first cloud architect job. In this video, we will teach you how to architect or design your cloud architect career. We'll first begin by defining the career. We'll talk about what is a cloud architect. We'll talk about what does a cloud architect do. And then we will tell you all the things you're gonna to need to know. So we will define all of the cloud architect skills the business skills, as well as the technology skills, so you know exactly how to get your first cloud architect job, and not only know how to get your first cloud architect job, but be very successful in your cloud architect career, solution architect career, or enterprise architect career. So to begin, what is a cloud architect? I mean, what is a cloud architect really? And a cloud architect is really a digital transformation specialist. This means that the cloud architect is an expert on both business and technology. The cloud architect is an expert at selecting the best technologies to improve a company's business performance. Now, please listen carefully. The fact that a cloud architect is responsible to improve business performance has significant and a critical impact on the skills necessary to get that first cloud architect job. In fact, the skills of the cloud architect are so rare, that's why people struggle to get cloud architect jobs. It's not that cloud architect jobs are very challenging to get but the customer is looking for a special skill. But see, when you have the right skills, it's not hard to get a cloud architect job. We get people their first cloud architect jobs every day. In fact, there's almost not a day that goes by where one of my students says, guess what, Mike, I'm cloud hired. I got my first cloud architect job, so I wanna teach you how to get your first cloud architect job too. So now you know what a cloud architect is, what does a cloud architect do? Well, we can take the cloud architect career and really break it down into three major components. These three major components can be involved as called design, present, and sell. It's so critical what cloud architects do by being known to these three components of design, present, and sell that I'm gonna say it twice and that's why I did. First thing to remember the cloud architect role is a customer facing role. It is not a hands-on role, meaning the cloud architect will never touch the technology. This is a role of designing, presenting, and selling. So what goes into designing and present, presenting and then sales? Well, it all starts with the client interview. The cloud architect, the account manager, will go to the customer and they will ask the customer about their business. We will ask the customer, what are your business's goals? For example, do you want to increase sales? Are you trying to improve employee productivity? Are you trying to improve your supply chain performance? Automate business processes, for example. Reduce costs. See, it all starts with the business case. No customer buys technology because they like it. They buy technology to improve the performance and that cloud architect is that digital transformation specialist. So once we know what the customer wants, now we know what kind of problems we need to solve. So what's the next thing we do? We go to the customer, I know all about their business. The next thing we need to do is figure out what does the company's technology systems look like? So what do we do as a cloud architect? We bring in a team of cloud engineers and they're gonna baseline the company's systems. What's their networking doing? What's going on in their data center? What's going on, period? Then we're gonna learn about the customer's environment. Once we know what the customer has, we know the customer's goals, it's time to design a solution. So the cloud architect is a leader. Cloud architecture is a team sport. The cloud architect will then build their team. They'll be reaching out to the management in their own companies and they're gonna say, management, I need some big data architects, some security architects, some network architects, some application architects, some cloud engineers, some DevOps engineers, some maintenance people called sysops people. We're gonna bring them all together into the same room. And then as an architect, I'm gonna lead the discussion and we're all gonna to contribute to building a wonderful design a design that's gonna improve that customer's business performance. And because we brought in a team of specialists, we didn't try and do it ourselves, the solution's gonna work and it's gonna be transformational to our customer. Now, after we've got that solution that's designed by this big team of experts, the cloud architect will document that solution in multiple formats, meaning we'll create a diagram like a Visio diagram or a Lucid chart diagram, for example. We'll then write three versions of the architecture document 
We're going to write a short one for the chief executive officer, the CIO, the CTO, etc. We're going to write another version of that document for the management teams. And we're going to write another version of that architecture document that's going to for the deep technology professionals that are going to have to build it. Then, after we write these documents, we're going to go back to the customer and deliver a series of presentations. A series of presentations for the executives, a series of presentations for the management, and a series of presentations to the technical people. Then, after we deliver our presentations and we know go, go, and everybody sees it, we're going to go back and forth. The customer is going to say, I like this, but not this. So we're going to go back to the drawing board, go back to our teams, and tune the design. Once we finalize the design, we go back to the customer and we try and sell it to the customer. So, nobody buys technology because they like it. So, the first thing we have to do as a cloud architect and the account managers and account team is build a business case. We look at the cost of the solution and then we analyze how will that solution impact the business. And we create something called a return on investment capital model where we analyze the customer's business, we analyze the impact of the tech, and we can tell the customer, if you spend your $100 million on this tech, we can generate $300 million of business value. And we must do this. We must generate a return on investment capital model. Here's the reason why. Companies only have a finite amount of resources, meaning if they spend the money on one thing, they can't spend it on something else. So you have to convince the customer that investing in your cloud architecture is greater than something else. That's called opportunity cost. If you can invest in one place, you can't invest somewhere else. You're going to have to prove to the customer that your solution, your cloud architecture, is worth them investing in. Now, you built your business case, and now it's time to really sell it back. So we're going back to the client, more presentations, lots of negotiation going back and forth. Guess what that means? The cloud architect needs great negotiation skills. And obviously, the business acumen to do that ROI modeling. Now, we negotiate, we design, we present, we sell. The customer says, yes, we like it. We cloud architects are happy. Woohoo! Our job is done. Guess what we now do? We go to the next customer and we design something else and we get a nice big fat commission check and we are really, really happy. So, as soon as the design is sold, we go to someplace else. What are the skills to be ready for the design, present, and sell part? Well, we're going to talk about the presentation and sales part right now. First and foremost, you need extraordinarily good presentation skills as an architect and the ability to present to the C-level executives, the management team, and the technology team, and you're going to be doing this every day. We're also going to be responding to sales documents such as RFIs, RFPs, RFQs. We're going to be responding constantly to RFIs, requests for proposals, requests for pricing, etc., etc., and we're going to be answering them with how our solution can solve the customer's problem. Now, we're going to do a lot of entertaining clients. How much entertaining clients? Perhaps 25% of our job. To put it in the context, in one year, I spent over $100,000 on lunches just entertaining clients. That's not what I spent for dinners and drinks, talking to people, entertaining them. And we're doing this to build relationships with our clients. And really, when you have a good relationship, the clients will tell you the information you need. So you're going to be doing a lot of entertaining clients, and you have to be good at it. Then we're going to be leading large teams. We're going to do a proof of concept. Remember, the cloud architect designs, presents, and sells, but doesn't touch the, tech, touch the technology. So we're going to be leading teams of cloud engineers, and we have to be able to do that. And they won't be working for us. They're going to be working for someone else. So we have to lead without authority, which is a very challenge. And the cloud architect needs extremely good leadership skills. We're going to be managing relationships with clients, and we're going to be finding and collaborating with internal resources. So we need lots of great skills being able to be in our company and say, I need this application architect. I need this cloud security architect. I need them for the next two weeks. So we're going to have to sell that to our internal management. Guess what? Also, we're going to be dealing with external companies. For example, I've got a client and they want a robust security architecture. I got to call my security companies. I'm going to call Cisco and Palo Alto and Fortinet and Checkpoint, etc. And I'm going to ask them to help design a solution that's going to maximize the, the benefit for the customer. So I'm going to get them involved in my architectures too. Lastly, I've got to prove to the customer that the technology solution we want to sell them is worth it. So we've got to do business case creation and ROI modeling. Now, as cloud architects, we're going to be writing thought leadership papers that our companies are going to be publishing. We're going to be presenting at industry conferences, et cetera, et cetera. So we need the ability to do that. Lots of communication skills, lots of writing skills, executive writing skills, et cetera. Lots of soft skills in this job because we're doing a lot of leadership, lots of empathy required in this job, lots of emotional intelligence. So what we're dealing with, as you can see, it's a design, present, and sell job. So 
We talked about the business parts of the job. And let's talk about those things that are there. It's CXO relevancy, it's business acumen, it's leadership skills, it's sales skills, presentation skills, executive communication skills, and high levels of executive presence, high levels of emotional intelligence and negotiation. Why did I cover those skills so much? Even twice, if you wish? Because most people don't focus on them and that's the reason they don't get their first cloud architect job. Most people focus on the tech and the exact wrong part of the tech. And I want you to get cloud hard. I want you getting that first cloud architect job. And that's where we spent so much time on those skills because they're literally, critically speaking, at least 50% of the job. Now let's discuss the technical part of the job, the design part of the job. What does a cloud architect do? Designed an end-to-end -end solution to transform a customer's business. But let's be more explicit than that. Most of what we're doing is we're taking the stuff from the network in the data center, the traditional network in the data center, the cloud, which is nothing more than a virtual network in the data center. So what tech skills does a cloud architect need? Network and data center skills. Why? Because what we do is we take the stuff from the network in the data center to the cloud. What is that stuff? It's servers, it's storage, it's security appliances, it's databases, etc. We take that network and data stuff to the cloud and we must know those network and data center things. So that's why. Here's why. You can't move what you don't understand and you can't design what you don't understand either. So design is about putting the pieces together. It's about creating solution, a solution where the sum of the solution is greater than the sum of its parts. Now, mind you, this is a technical part is design. This is not a configuration thing. We don't touch the technology. So the type of certification training that's out there, which teaches you the name of a service and how to configure that service is irrelevant for us. Why is it so irrelevant? We don't configure anything. We design, present, and sell. So for us, it's not knowing how to do stuff. It's knowing how things work, how to design them and how the parts fit together. So what are those tech skills that you need for that cloud architect career so you can get that cloud architect job? Well, you need to know BGP. You need to know interior gateway protocols, such as OSPF, intermediate systems, intermediate systems, EIGRP, et cetera. Although predominantly OSPF in today's world. You need to understand WAN technologies that organizations use to create their wide area networks to connect to the cloud. What are they? Private lines, ethernet private lines, ethernet over MPLS, IPsec tunnels, SSL based VPNs, software defined networking and SASE. Those are your WAN technologies. We've got to set up the IP addressing, subnetting, and supernetting because the IP addressing is, affects everything in our system. We're also going to be dealing with switching, which means VLANs, VLAN tagging, VLAN trunking, spanning tree, rough and spanning tree. We're going to be dealing with a lot of NAT, one to one NAT, one to many NAT, static NAT, dynamic NAT, other, etc. We're going to be dealing with some networking protocols such as ARP and proxy ARP and DNS and DHCP. We're going to be dealing extensively with servers and server virtualization, containers and container orchestration, storage area networks, whether they be block storage networks, object storage networks, file storage, etc. We're going to be dealing with lots of load balancers and some creative load balancer architectures, network load balancers, application load balancers, load balancer stacking, etc. We're going to be dealing with a lot of security devices like next generation firewalls, intrusion detection, intrusion prevention system. VPN concentrators, databases, for example, and business applications such as CRM applications and ERP applications, any of the things necessary to improve that business performance. And you can see none of these skills are covered in certifications, which teach the name of a service and how to configure that, which certification training is fine for an entry level job like a cloud admin or a help desk. But architect skills are senior skills. They're designed, present, and sell skills. And you have to have these skills to get these. You might think, I don't like certifications. Well, that's not true. I actually love certifications, but I love them for a reason. See, I know that if you get the right certifications, I can help you get brought in for an interview, which I love because you need that interview to get hired. But here's what I also know. After coaching people for 20 years and getting more people jobs than I can count, no one will ever hire you because you have a certification. I'm going to say this again. Certifications get nobody hired. This is so important, I'm going to say it again. Certifications will never get anybody a job because certifications are the name of a service and how to configure that service, which is not what we do. But they do help us get an interview. And getting an interview is very valuable. So we use the certifications to get an interview. Now, let's talk about certifications to optimize your portfolio. Remember, you are digital transformation specialists. So getting 10 certifications is not a competitive advantage. 
In fact, getting 10 certifications will keep you from getting that cloud architect job because it will make you look like a techie and not a digital transformation specialist. So since we like certifications, what are our recommendations? We recommend a single cloud cert, just one. And we recommend one of these three, the AWS Certified Solution Architect Professional, the Azure Solution Architect Expert, or the Google Professional Cloud Architect. Just one of those three, you don't need more than one. Now we also like to see a network or a data center or a security cert, why? What do cloud architects do? They take the stuff from the network and the data center and move it to the cloud. So we like one of the following certifications. A Cisco Certified Network Professional is a network certification. Maybe a Red Hat Certified Engineer as a data center certification. A CISSP as a security certification or a CCSP as a security for certification. Note, we didn't list any associate certifications here and there's a reason. Associate certifications mean almost ready for entry level practice, but not ready to hire. We've only mentioned professional certifications. And we've said one from industry and one from the, from the cloud, and that's it. Just remember, you're a digital transformation specialist and not a tech. So now you know the skills you need to become a cloud architect. Now, if you want to train with us, we will do everything we can to help you get your first cloud architect job. And we get people cloud hired every day. Every day, one of my cloud architect students gets a new job. But if you're not with us, that's okay. Now you know what to do. Now you know the cloud architect is a hybrid role of a business executive and a technology professional. Now you know all the skills you need to get from the business perspective and the technology perspective. So go learn these skills, master these skills and get your first cloud architect job. And when you're cloud hired, send me an email, let us know, because I love when people get cloud hired. This is Michael Gibbs. I'm the founder and CEO of Go Cloud Careers here to help you build your best cloud computing career. Take care and I'll see you in another video. It was so nice having you join us for this video today. Let me tell you about some free services we do for the cloud community. We have a free how to get your first cloud architect job webinar, where we tell you all the things you need to do and know to get your first cloud architect job. In addition to that, we actually have a free question and answer session on live on YouTube, where you can come and ask us any questions you want about building your career related to cloud computing or networking, and we'll answer them in real time for you because we want to get you to your goals. Several more times per week, we have guests from industry, industry experts that I've known for decades that are movers and shakers that have changed the world that can give you information so you can build the best career. I invite them periodically. They are on my show. If there's a chance to do some free training on our channel, we'll do it live because we want you to all to have the best skills for the best career. So please subscribe and hit the bell. I look forward to seeing you and I look forward to assisting you in your technology career. Thank you so much. This is Michael Gibbs from GoCloudArchive.